Hello, welcome to Living Science. Dr. Pawan Malhotra, Head of the Malaria Research at the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology based in Delhi is here with us today. Dr. Malhotra has authored more than 80 papers in high profile journals such as PNS, JXMED and MCP. Dr. Malhotra has also received several awards including Krishnamurthy Award in 2009 and is listed in GRC Goa Research Conference this year 2014. Dr. Malhotra has been a mentor to several students and Plasmodium falciparum has been his model organism to work with for several decades but that has not stopped him from exploring the other model organisms such as plants and viruses. Uh, Dr. Malhotra, we are very pleased to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Dr. Malhotra, first of all, uh, we would like to know uh, how is that uh, you are able to keep a very high momentum going for three decades. You are known to work uh, nine to six uh, non-stop on all working days and also you spend a lot of time in lab on weekends. So uh, we want to know where do you get this energy from? You know the whole uh, thing I got it from my parents first that they always told me that hard work always pays. And I really want to give back to the nation whatever I get got from this nation I want to give them back. And I must tell you that even the US uh, stay uh, also taught me number of things, particularly when I watch them that they are working between working hours and 9 to 6, they always work very, very uh, sincerely. And then uh, they do not work after, after 6 o'clock. But their commitment and their sincerity always really taught me uh, that we should do the same commitment for uh, Indian science, we should give that back. Uh, so Dr. Malhotra, it is an interesting organism to work with and uh, your recent work has also found a new complex uh, which uh, helps in degradation of hemoglobin to uh, hemozoin. Uh, can you just share that uh, story with us? Okay, uh, major focus in uh, our group, in malaria group in ICGV has been to understand parasite biology mm -hmm. and then leading towards the identification of new drug targets. Why we want to do this? This is a very important issue because since 1996, no new drug uh, against malaria parasite has been discovered. And uh, as you most of you know that there is a resistance coming uh, against this parasite, both Plasmodium vivax as well as falciparum. Again, so with, there is a need for the identification of new drug targets and uh, development of the new drugs. So that is the major focus in the lab. So one of the projects which we have uh, undertaken uh, last few years has been to understand the process of uh, hemoglobin degradation and hemozoin formation. I must tell you that uh, if you watch a parasite under microscope, you find that this parasite has a dark uh, patch or pigment inside. Uh, you can clearly it is visible in the microscope and this is actually a hemozoin crystal that we can see in the parasite. Now uh, over research over the years have shown that this crystal formation is very much essential. And there are uh, evidences uh, which suggest that, uh, that uh, the existing antimalarials chloroquine and artemisines are acting uh, on this crystal formation. So, so we have been always interested to understand the whole process of hemoglobin degradation and uh, hemozoin. There has been earlier report from other labs that has shown that there are number of proteases. This proteases belong to uh, cysteine protease family, aspartic protease family and metalloprotease family uh, that degrades hemoglobin. But how they do it and what is actually how they uh, work together has not been known earlier. So uh, using some of the modern technologies like uh, immunoprecipitation followed by uh, MSMS, mass spectrophotometry, uh, spectrophotometry technology, we found that, uh, that these many of these proteases of different classes, they actually work together. They exist together in a complex and work together. Mm -hmm. And along with these proteases, uh, there are six proteases we identified in the complex. Uh, we found another interesting protein which is called heme detoxification protein. So heme detoxification uh, protein, there has been one study which showed that 
this protein can convert heme to hemozoan crystal. So, using all these previous report and uh, some of these recent technologies, we now have shown that parasite proteases uh, exist in a complex with heme, heme detoxification protein which we called it HDP. This complex acts on hemoglobin, it breaks hemoglobins to heme and globin. Parasite uses this globin, uh, globin is further converted to uh, amino acids. Parasite uses this amino acid for its own protein synthesis. So that is why this, this at, at the food, that is why this is very essential uh, step. And the heme which is present has to be converted or has to be neutralized. Otherwise, it has been seen that this heme which is a free heme is toxic to the parasite. So, as soon as hemoglobin is degraded into heme and globin, globin is converted into small amino acids which are utilized by the parasite, but the heme is picked up by heme detoxification protein. And this heme detoxification protein converts this heme to this hemozoan crystal. So, our work we can recapitulate the whole process uh, in the test tube by molecular biology approaches and recombinant biology approaches. And now we have clearly shown that you can convert straight away hemoglobin to hemozoin in test tubes. Mm -hmm. So, this gave handle uh, to us mm -hmm. to understand the mode of action of two uh, current antimalarials, chloroquine and artemisinin. So, we could show that, that which step of this process chloroquine X and which step of the process uh, artemisinin X. So, this in vitro formation of hemozoin also has given us a handle for the discovery of new antimalarials based on the data which we have obtained. Now, we can test this new antimalarial which acts on this pathway using this in vitro technique and also show that where does these various drugs can act on this pathway. Recently, MVI has also used uh, this uh, process of uh, hemozoin formation and also identified in novel drugs which acts on this pathway and this drug is now being uh, 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 is under trial for various other uh, combination with other drugs. So, I personally feel elucidation of this process has given us a, a lead to understand the whole pathway which is a very specific for malaria parasite which is not present in other parasites. So, your understanding uh, uh, complexes and proteins inside the parasite and which are playing a crucial role and somehow actually even uh, saving life of parasite because otherwise it will be toxic and it has figured out how to use hemoglobin as a food and also make a byproduct which is stable and, and does not do anything to it. So, how did you move uh, from uh, uh, studying inside of the parasite to uh, the proteins which get secreted out. So, how did you move, made this transition? Okay. Another uh, thing which we always have been very curious to know is that how does parasite establish itself by human host? Since parasite grows in the serum uh -huh. and there is a lot of uh, immune uh, attacks it faces, uh -huh. how does it actually uh, survives uh, those attacks and establish itself. So, uh, to understand this we applied uh, again proteomic approaches to, to know what are the proteins parasite is actually secreting out in the media. This was uh, done on a belief that parasite proteins which are secreted must be modulating some of this uh, anti-parasitic immune responses. So, uh, when we did this uh, proteomic approaches in it took us time to establish the whole system actually because uh, the uh, parasite is grown in hemoglobin and there is a lot of uh, hemoglobin in the serum. So, when you do proteomic approaches there is always a plenty of hemoglobin that inter interferes. So, first we uh, applied number of uh, technologies to, to move the hemoglobin out and that helped us to pick up novel parasite proteins which are secreted into the culture media. So, we believe that these proteins are also being secreted constantly into the human blood. When we uh, analyze this protein. So, what we can 
state specific or you were just taking entire No, we, we, we did mostly the asexual blood stages at the trophocyte stage, okay. which is the highly metabolic active stage. Okay. And uh, we believe that most of the secretions are happening at these stages. And we also uh, took a asynchronous culture where all the stages are included. And when we analyze this protein uh, after proteomics analysis by bioinformatic approaches, we found that uh, we, we could identify 33 parasite protein in the soup. Mm -hmm. And these out of these 33 parasite protein, only 5 have been earlier uh, really uh, characterized. Mm -hmm. So the to around 27 proteins we found were novel proteins. And we, when we did the domain analysis of these proteins, we found that many of these protein has special domains or motifs, which in other organisms have been shown to have some role in immune modulation. Mm -hmm. So now I tell you, uh, we picked up some of these protein. Mm -hmm. So I will describe few proteins in my talk today. Mm -hmm. One of the protein we picked up was a protein which was a below, which has a domain called cell domain cell 1 domain or cell 2 domain. The cell domain in C. elegans have been shown that they uh, down regulate the notch pathway. This is again a immune pathway. So we characterized this cell 1 protein and showed that indeed parasite protein having cell 1 domain also down regulate the notch mm -hmm. pathway. So you found a similar function Similar functions. So it means that one of the protein uh, is down regulating notch pathway which is helping parasite to it's establish. Coming out from parasite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then another protein which we uh, identified was a DECP, uh, HTRL family of protein mm -hmm. which actually codes for protease chaperon uh, properties. And this protein, it, this protein has a, only worked on bacteria and has been shown that it is involved in pathogenesis mm -hmm. and also it has been known that it actually is responsible for combating oxidative and thermal stresses. Mm -hmm. But nothing has been known uh, for this protein in other organisms. So since we got this protein in the secretory uh, proteome, we thought that we should work on this protein. And uh, we were lucky that we could get, uh, get an E. coli mutant uh, for this protein, and uh, DECP protein. Mm -hmm. So we uh, put uh, a, a parasite DECP gene into this E. coli mutant and then studied whether this E. coli can take combat the oxidative and thermal stresses. Why do we want to do it? Mm -hmm. As you know when malaria parasite enter the human body, the, we get a lot of thermal shocks because there is chilling and followed by a heavy high fever. Right. So there is a lot of thermal shocks a body faces. Then still the parasite survives, survives because of thermal shocks. If you take the parasite in vitro and put the, give this type of thermal shocks, uh, it survives. And we can see that uh, in in vitro culture. So we thought that this protein might be playing, that we might be playing a crucial Similar role. Uh, combating this thermal shock and we could show scientifically using this E. coli strain expressing parasite DACP protein that yes this E. coli was able to take care of the thermal shocks. So this clearly showed that parasite DACP is able to take care of the thermal and oxidative stress when parasite is in the serum of the human being. Uh, we think that this is very important protein and uh, we can use it as far as an important drug target mm -hmm. for the development of new drugs. Another secretory protein uh, which we identified is actually complement control protein. Mm -hmm. As most of you know that uh, there are many arms of the immune uh, system which actually fight for the, for the human being uh, so that pathogen can't establish. And one of the innate immune response is the complementation activation. And complementation act activation actually as soon as pathogen enters, it gets activated and this phagocytizes the infected human cells. So this is again a protective mechanism uh, within the human body. Uh, so a parasite we found has a protein called complement control protein which we believe it actually prevent the complement activation. Mm -hmm. So we thought let us characterize this protein. The domain which we identified in this protein was LCCL domain which has been earlier shown that it may have the ability to bind 
complement factor 4 or 3. So, we did homology modeling study and docking studies and our result clearly showed that this domain can bind to C4 and C3 complement factors wow. in the uh, uh, by structural analysis. Then we also identified other motif in this complement control protein and these pro motifs we found that they have the ability to bind the immune cells as well as they can bind the, uh, some of the dendritic cells also. And then we could show that this protein, this domain of the protein actually uh, down regulate the TLR2 mediated immune responses. So, clearly uh, these results clearly showed us that parasite one of the secretory protein not only modulate immune system and also down regulate uh, the complement system. So, we believe that many of the protein which we identified actually works towards the modulating the immune responses which are against the parasite establishment. So, this secretory proteins helps the parasite to establish in the human body. Another protein which we identified is actually a protein which probably is providing nutrient to the parasite. As you know the parasite grows in human serum and along with the hemoglobin we now know that parasite also require al serum albumin for its survival. Uh, so, I am actually bringing back, uh, bringing you back to the inside of the parasite and some of your work has a, a rather very uh, recent, it just got published right. The, you have shown um, uh, that there is an inhibitor uh, which uh, uh, affects the trafficking of SRP molecules. So, can you shed some of light on that work and also I have associated question, uh, you are working and asking a lot of basic biology questions. So, how did you make this transition of asking a more applied which could be an effective drug? So, how did you kind of came up with this transitional uh, kind of project? Okay, as you know that many process, fundamental processes are actually conserved across the evolution. So, one of the process which is that how the proteins are synthesized, they are synthesized on ribosomes and from the ribosome they are destined to go to their uh, proper place. And the one of the uh, proteins which are secretory is they go through the endoplasmic reticulum. So, as soon as the proteins are synthesized in the cytoplasm of parasite and, and by ribosomes, they have to move towards the endoplasmic reticulum. And there is a complex of protein called signal recognition particles that recognizes the signal sequence of a protein and takes this protein to the endoplasmic reticulum where a receptor called uh, S SR receptor exists and takes the protein into the endoplasmic reticulum. So, we, uh, we believe that many of these pathogen or organisms, uh, they have uh, processes which are conserved, but they also differ among various organisms. Like SRP in E. coli just consists of one protein and one RNA, while in human it consists of six proteins and one RNA. So, we wanted to know how does this signal recognition particle uh, organize in Plasmodium falciparum. So, we uh, cloned and, by, and identified by bioinformatic analysis this various component of signal recognition particle. And then we hooked these some of the protein of signal recognition particle with a with a reporter protein called GFP. Mm -hmm. This again discovery got Nobel Prize earlier uh, that some of these proteins you can use and understand the trafficking of the protein inside an organism. Mm -hmm. So, we hooked GFP to signal recognition particle and we could see the movement of signal recognition particle inside the parasite. Mm -hmm. and one thing we noticed that there is a shuttling of signal recognition particle from the cytoplasm to the nucleus that happens in the parasite, similar to what has been shown in human also. And there has been earlier literature which shows that there are three drugs which acts on this signal recognition particle. One is aflatoxin B, uh, which actually uh, binds to the signal recognition particle. And there is another report on leptomycin B which people have shown that it affects the transport, it, it expects the export of the molecules between the nucleus to cytoplasm. And another drug which has been, which is also being used in helminthes as an anti helminthes drug and also very popular drug in the animal kingdom is uh, avermectin. Mm -hmm. 
this avermectin has been shown that it actually again aff uh, affects the movement uh, from the cytoplasm to nucleus. So, it is it's a important inhibitors. So, we use we thought can this uh, does uh, do this drug act on the plasmodium falciparum. So, we use this drug in, in the parasite culture and we were very surprised to see since we have this reporter line the glowing parasite line. So, we could easily observe the effect of these drugs and we could see that the two drugs aflatoxin B and leptomycin B did not affect the parasite at all. So, it means they are working differently than uh, on the and also on the growth of the parasite also. But ivermectin was really effective at a sub micromolar range and it really killed almost all the whether it is chloroquine resistance or sensitive strain of the parasite. But at the sub micromolar around 3 to 5 micromolar range it was able to block. When we looked this treated parasite under the microscope we could see that uh, there was block in the movement of signal recognition particle protein from the erythrocyte cytoplasm to inside the nucleus. Now, these proteins were not able to shuttle. The question is you may ask me this question that since uh, this similar mechanism happens in human why it affected the parasite they could also affect the human cell. But when we really went deep into this and we could find that parasite has only one uh, important import which consists of two uh, proteins import in alpha and beta. While human has around uh, various combination of importance maybe around 50 uh, importance. That is why uh, this drug there is a redundancy. So, this drug is not able to affect the human cell while since there is only one important alpha and beta together. So, this was very efficient to block this nuclear transport. So, we believe that our mactin since it is already, already being used in human as an anti almanthis and it is being generally used in animal system. So, we believe that we, this drug may be a combination drug in future if we try to modify because at present this drug is only working at some micromolar range. So, with medicinal chemist we think that we should try to modify this drug further mm -hmm. so that it can be used. Uh, uh, in human uh, along with the other uh, drug in combination. You know it is always good to use now drugs in combination to get, uh, because otherwise resistance comes. So, we use we think that this can be used in combination with uh, artemisinin and chloroquine uh, uh, and can be a new uh, drug therapy. So, Dr. Malhotra your lab has done such wonderful work and lot of other labs in malaria. In fact, many many labs are working in malaria. Uh, in India and every, um, Europe, US. Uh, so, why is that that e research in malaria is still a burning question and more so in India and thousands of lives are lost every year. So, why is that we are not able to control this disease or um, eradicate completely when we are able to do so uh, for tetanus, uh, polio, measles. So, what is the big challenge in this area? Uh, as I mentioned earlier also that the challenge is that it has uh, Two, it has two host mm -hmm. and it has number of different uh, uh, developmental stages and they all have different kind of antigen expressed on the, uh, on the surfaces. So, we still do not know actually the key uh, uh, interaction which is happening between the host and the parasite and people believe that there are multiple interactions happening. And parasite uh, as I mentioned earlier that the process of invasion of host cell is very very uh, well organized and there are number of steps that actually happens in this. And there are different proteins which participate at these different steps of invasion. So, that is why we, we are actually not able to find a key nodal point which can be targeted. Mm -hmm. And this process happens so fast the invasion process happens so fast that it is very hardly able to really target each step uh, with one, one chemical or one molecule. So, another uh, complexity here is that a parasite has been shown to undergo a lot of antigenic variations mm -hmm. that at there is a switching on and switching off and antigen at different uh, steps of the parasite development. And that is why the immune system uh, human are not been able to make 
uh, immune competent antibodies against this parasite. It is because of this up till now for last 50, 40 to 50 years we have not been able to develop vaccine and also there has not been much progress in the development of new powerful drugs against this parasite because of some of these complexity that we have seen. Uh, so where do you see the research in malaria going let's say in 10 years from now? Okay. Uh, there has been a lot of technological advances in the recent years uh, in, in biological sciences as well as in other sciences also. And uh, we can now, uh, since I started my research, I was not able to uh, confidently say that I am now looking at malaria parasite and studying various biological aspects. Now with microscopic advances, proteomic advances as well as array, microarray advances, we now can understand parasite biology much better. And uh, that has helped us to really identify lots of uh, new targets of malaria parasite and also understand parasite biology very well. This has also given us handle of uh, towards the uh, development of malaria uh, vaccine. Mm -hmm. Recently there has been report you must have read it that we can uh, generate a malaria vaccine which protects 30 to 50 percent of the patient. So efficacy is still low but it has given us a lead that we can develop a uh, vaccine against malaria. So efforts are there and in next 10 years I am quite sure that we will be ab able to develop a multiple uh, subunit, multi subunit vaccine against malaria parasite and that may be, will be much more effective and also since we have identified many new drug targets and uh, medicinal chemistry has very much advanced nowadays, we believe that there will be many new drugs which will be coming in next 10 years. As I said in my introduction, so you have worked on you plants and viruses and uh, your colleagues and actually are very amazed that you are able to work on different topics and write papers on very different, uh, uh, using very different jargon. How is that you are able to compartmentalize the brain and come back to malaria or go back to virus and plants? So can you just share that secret? See, it all depends on that how much you are excited about science. If you are really excited and if you really uh, believe uh, uh, that you want to do this, mm -hmm. I think you can enter into any area. Mm -hmm. Only thing is you need commitments and your uh, focus should be that you want. Now how did I enter into plant and virus? It's a, it's a very nice story. Mm -hmm. About uh, 12 years back when uh, RNA interference technology was coming, mm -hmm. three of us in ICGB thought we should apply this. Uh, technology into various organism. That time this uh, technology inter RNA interference was very at a uh, primitive stage, at the initial stages. So Dr. Raj Bhatnagar, Dr. Sunil Mukherjee and me started using this technology in plants, in insect and in, in malaria parasite. Mm -hmm. I was never, I am never afraid to, uh, to apply a technology, a new technology into, into mm -hmm. my field, into an organism. Uh, so I always want to do something new and novel that is has been always a part of my science. Whether it works or not I don't care, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, it can lead us to uh, new findings and novel ideas. So uh, since uh, transfection in malaria has been very difficult, uh, you cannot uh, do uh, routinely uh, recombination, uh, recombination in malaria parasite and create knockout parasite. So I thought let us apply this technology to malaria parasite. And th that is the way I entered into insect and plant feed also because we started applying together this technology into these areas and we got very many exciting yeah. results. And one of the exciting results we recently published that again RNA interference is an defense mechanism for the human being against the pathogen mm -hmm. because uh, it is an anti-parasitic uh, mechanism existing in human like immune system. So we have recently shown uh, a relationship between hepatitis B virus and uh, expression of the components of RNAi. If there is a high uh, amount of hepatitic B virus in the cell, the, uh, this component expression is very low. 
So we have used liver biopsy sample to show that there is a inverse correlation between the RNAi components and uh, virus titers. So we believe that again this is a defense mechanism which exists in the body like immune system to combat the, uh, the parasite or, uh, or pathogen establishment in the body. And again this can be used to develop new uh, drugs or therapies against these pathogens for the human body. Your answer has been very humble actually because it is not easy to switch hats so quickly and I think it is inspiring to um, all of us here. What in your opinion how do you rate uh, Indian students internationally and what do you think their potential you know, in comparison to international standards? I, I feel Indian students are as good as, um, uh, as foreign students mm -hmm. and I think they are more hard working than foreign students. Only thing is I feel that uh, they are not able to do because of number of reasons. One is environment. Mm -hmm. Our university environment is still not that conducive mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as in, to the research as in US mm -hmm. first of all. Second thing is our students are uh, meagerly paid. So most of the students don't get fellowship in time mm -hmm. and their fellowship uh, are not that much. So I particularly believe Indian, first of all, Indian they should get a good environment mm -hmm. to do a research and they should also get excited with the research what they are doing. So I believe that government of India should think uh, something in this regard and raise their fellowship and also uh, based on inflation their fellowship should increase with time mm -hmm. yearly and I think this should be done immediately so that student more and more student intelligent student enter into the science and research and I believe that we can achieve the world standard in no time if, if all this happens. Uh, so Dr. Malhotra it brings us to the end of this interview and I really want to uh, thank you for being here and you made it very easy for us to understand why it's challenging to make drug or vaccine against this parasite even though uh, it's, um, it sits in the human host but it has a very complicated life cycle and has two hosts and which brings another set of uh, challenges to control this parasite and also your work on um, converting hemoglobin to hemogen is very fascinating and then now you're looking at aspects of protein coming out of the parasite and controlling the immune system which could actually eventually be applied to many other organisms and lead to many more drugs. So we are very thrilled that you shared your story with us and we find it very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being part of Living Science.